since everybody is able to hear me properly this stream will be about understanding gray failures gray failures are the achilles heel of cloud scale systems this is a very interesting paper written to written by um, somebody quite interesting and that person is So this stream is about understanding gray failures and uh, let's begin. This paper was recommended uh, in a documentation of a database which I am keenly following known as Tiger Beetle. And I'm also starting a podcast where I'll be interviewing the CEO of Tiger Beetle. So those are the two interesting things which are happening. So before any further delay, let's get started by gray failures. So gray failures are something which are common. I mean, it's not unique sort of a failure which this paper has implemented. However, a gray failure is about those non fail stop errors, those non fail stop failures, which may not completely break down your uh, deployment or uh, neither do, do they completely stop your application, but they will be uh, affecting the performance of the application and they are very hard to observe as well. So the key feature of gray failure is differential observability. It means that the system's failure detectors may not even notice the problems when the application are affected by them. Okay. Cool. So this realization leads us to believe that to best deal with them, we should focus on bridging the gap between components perception of what constitute as failure. Cloud possesses an abundance of redundant components, providing many opportunities to tolerate faults so a system can continue to run. However, to make the best use of this ability, a system must be able to rapidly and reliably detect when a component is failing. That's quite obvious, right? So how do we do it? And before doing it, we have to understand in a better way what gray failures are. So some common gray failures are random packet loss, you know, flaky IO, memory thrashing, capacity pressure, non-fatal exceptions. So as the scale of your application increases, as you go cloud scale, as you are building something of Azure scale, right? So even if there is 1% chance of a failure of, of, of a disk, for example, if you go to a, you know, 10,000 uh, uh, cluster machine, that chance increases. So you, there are higher chances that you will be seeing those rare failures, which are non observant in a smaller sort of a deployment. So in a diverse workload and in a multi tenancy environment, it is very, uh, very common to observe these rare events. Okay. The first hand experience is that gray failures is behind most cloud incidents. Cool. Developers generally follow common practice of building fault tolerant and highly available system by introducing redundancy, failure detection and failure recovery. But such mechanisms are inadequate to deal with gray failures. So what are some common gray failures? Let's go there. Uh, before going there, one more important term is differential observability. So gray failures possess a quality that they are, they are perceived differently by different entities. And that is why they are uh, terming it as differential observability. Okay. Um, specifically, one, ed one entity is negatively affected by the failure and another entity does not even perceive that failure exists. This is problematic because the latter entity is responsible for failure detection and recovery. For instance, if a system's request handling module is stuck, but the heartbeat module is not, then error handling module relying on the heartbeats will perceive that the system is healthy, while the client seeking service will per perceive that it has failed. Another example is if a link is operating at significantly lower bandwidth than usual, then um, the connectivity test will reveal no problem because the system is reachable. However, the bandwidth or the speed of connection might 
be bad so even though system is system is not technically broken but the system is still not functioning the way we want it to function so the one way to deal with gray failure is to mask it using protocols robust to gray failures one common thing is using bft byzantine fault tolerant state machines um this brings uh, an important question that do we can we say that bitcoin or all those cryptocurrencies or blockchain based models because those are bft based they are actually fault tolerant of uh, the gray failures that is something which we can think of later on all right so um, one way a more fundamental problem with masking gray failures instead of detecting it is that the failed components may not get replaced leading to their number eventually exceeding the number that can be tolerated we therefore advocate tackling the problem of gray failure head on by addressing its fundamental trait differential observability we outline a potential solution to this line okay so there are some common problems which they uh, mention for example high redundancy hurt so for example there are multiple switches there are uh, you know cluster nodes a b c every node is uh, and these are the switches okay so every node if a has to communicate with b it has to go through the through the switch r1 now let's assume that switch has observed some gray failure which means that the redundancy has increased because of uh, anything let's say because of silent packet drops or random pack packet drops but the uh, the the switch is actually working but gray failures are observed in that case when the switch has not crashed the system won't detect any problem however because of this gray failure which has been observed here uh, the latency or the application glitch actually increases so that is a consequence which we see where increasing redundancy actually lowers the availability for example consider the following common workload pattern to process a request a front end server must fan out request to many back end servers and wait for almost all of them to respond if there are n core switches the probability that a certain core switch is traversed by request is 1 minus n minus 1 by n into m where m is fan out factor this probability rapidly approaches 100% as m becomes large meaning each request has high probability of involving every core switch thus gray failure at any core switch will delay nearly every front end request consequently redundancy increasing redundancy can counter intuitively hurt the application's availability because more core switches there are the more likely at least one of them will experience a gray failure and this is a classic case where considering gray, gray failure forces us to reevaluate the common wisdom of building highly available systems that is quite exciting right because most of the times what we do is we say that, okay let's uh, we have to build a system which is highly available so throw in more servers throw in more switches and things like that so that the if one of the server is actually getting crashed or things like that we have the request still can go to multiple other servers but if we have if we are building a system uh, with this kind of uh, application and if it is highly available it simply means that we are adding more redundancy and it is hurting the availability of the application then there are under the radar failure detection these guys are mentioning more failure detect uh, more types of gray failures recovery that kills rather than heals azure storage uses data servers to store data and a store manager to decide which data servers to store the data on in one instance a certain data server was experiencing a severe capacity constraint but a subtle resource reporting bug caused the store manager to not detect this gray failure thus store manager continued a uh, continues to write request to this degraded server causing it to crash and reboot of course the reboot did nothing to fix the underlying problem so the store manager once again routed the re, uh, new write request to it but what happened was that the server by the time uh, the failure detector detected the data server was repeatedly rebooting it concluded that it was irreparable and took it out of service this along another subtleties in replica workflows reduce the total available storage in the system and put pressure on the remaining healthy servers this caused more servers to degrade and experience same ultimate fate naturally 
this eventually led to a catastrophic cascading failure. It's quite exciting, right? All right. So now we have understood what uh, gray failures are. Gray failures are those failures which don't fail stop a system and <coughs> they are perceived differently by different entities. Some may some may see some problems while the gray failures are happening and the some entities may not observe them at all. So what to do when, when those type of failures happen? So let's see, modeling and defining gray failure. Although anecdotes of gray failures have been circulating among practitioners in literature for years, the term gray failure still lacks precision precise definition. While it is often associated with performance degradation, intermittent misbehavior, fail slow behavior or capacity reduction, none of these characteristics capture the essence of gray failure. Hence, they have defined the differential observability term. Extensive study of real incidents in Azure Cloud Service, we make an attempt to define gray failure using generic model. An abstract model to characterize gray failure. So we have got observer, we have got a reactor, and then we have got application. So the difference between application and observer is most likely what gray, fail, gray failures are. Okay. A system which provides a service, an app which uses the system. Examples of a system include distributed storage service, a data center, network, web server, etc. Cetera, et cetera. One system may be an app for another system. So these are the terminologies here. Now let's understand what differential observability means, which is something which is exciting, right? Okay. So differential observability says that in addition to systems internal observation, an app that uses the system also to make its own observation about the health of the system. In addition to the system's internal observer, an app that uses the system also does its observation for that system. Okay. Such observations are typically based on application specific end to end metrics such as query latency, remote IO status, because it is common for a cloud system to be used by different types of apps, right? So every app has got its own way to check whether the system is working or not. We then define gray failure as form of differential observability. More precisely, a system is defined to experience gray failure when at least one app makes the observation that system is unhealthy, but the observer observes that system is healthy. Okay. So the system's internal observer says the system is healthy, but the apps are saying that system is faulty. In this case, the difference in the observation is what uh, is termed as gray failure. Okay, so this is quite interesting because see what we are doing when we are trying to study these kind of papers and why I am doing it live. I have not studied this paper before. The, po the point why I am reading these, this paper live uh, in front of you all who will be watching it later on because right now uh, seems that nobody is watching this <laughs> live stream almost. So when you will be watching it, one thing you have to ask yourself is how do you design or how do you start to think in a way that you are going to design a multiple cloud, multiple server, extremely big different uh, distributed systems that you have to ask yourself. And why this is important? Because all of us wants to grow into mature roles. You don't want to stick and stay as a um, normal software engineer who just knows algorithms and data structure. You also want to evolve to system design and then architecture design, right? So that is why we are studying these kind of papers. Moving on. So gray failure is not unique to the large system, small scale or even single node application may also observe it. So that's the specification of gray failure. Okay. So we kind of understood what gray, what differential observability is. What is temporal evolution? Gray failure tends to exhibit an interesting evolution pattern along the temporal dimension. Initially, the system experiences minor faults and it tends to suppress it. Gradually, the system transitions it to degraded mode. That is gray failure. So from late, first we experience latent failure and then we go to something known as gray failure. That is externally visible, which the observer does not see. The observer means the internal observ observer of the system. Okay. And finally, that gray failure may degrade the system even more so that we see completely uh, complete failure of the system and the system actually shuts down. So that is something what gray failure does to your 
hold on let me just check the score and hope india is not doing that bad what's happening how what's the score of india ooh meth okay no problem let's get back so we use differential observability trait to model uh, to and model our character and our model to characterize this pattern when observations of both observer and app are good system is either working well or having a minor latent failure as soon as there is difference we can say that gray failure starts to happen eventually the observer detects the problem uh, and by this point gray failure has evolved into a complete failure so this this is something which is which we want to avoid we want to detect gray failures early so that we can actually try to avoid this transition to happen so let's apply the model now we apply our model to two grave failure use cases and anomalies described earlier in two what is two this guy okay in the network case some service app transmits packet through the network the switch our observers the routing protocol is the retractor if core if a core switch experiences random packet drop it nearest observers will not perceive it that it has failed thus packets will not be routed rerouted however if the app has high fan out workload pattern it is likely to observe a problem even though observers do not leading to a differential observability and gray failure in storage services for example when several data servers are under severe capacity pressure the store manager acting as both observer as well as reactor is aware is unaware of the issue but some vms may experience remote io exceptions they observe unhealthiness this is differential observability between observer and the app that is constituting of gray failure after the data server crashes the observer detects failure and perceives it as regular crash so reactor makes the data node reboot making the data node perceived as healthy again in this vicious loop more observation differences and instance of gray failure arises eventually systems become aware of the cascading failure so observation difference permanently disappear but it is too late so what is the solution talk to me about that how do we solve gray failures as cloud systems continue to scale overlooked gray failure problem becomes acute pain in achieving high availability understanding this problem domain is thus paramount importance drawing from experience we argue that this problem is crucial to reduce dif it is crucial to reduce differential observability or key trait okay so basically the paper is claiming that if we if we reduce the differentiable observability in the design then we'll be able to overcome gray failure okay i think that is what is being claimed by this paper okay let's see closing the observation gap a natural solution to gray failure is to close the observation gaps between system and apps that it services in particular system observers have traditionally focused on gathering information reliably about whether components are up or down but gray failures make these just simple uh, not just simple black and white judgments therefore we advocate moving from singular failure detection that is heartbeats to multi dimensional heart health monitoring okay so we have a solution here this is analogous to make assessments of human body condition we need to monitor not only heartbeat but also vital signs including temperature etc okay fine cool so we could leverage vm in uh, in vm performance counters to detect connectivity issues earlier we could thereby avoid customer report incidents all right so what we want to do is we want to basically detect gray failures and we want to do it in time so that we don't get information that our system has failed from the users or the customers that is what we want to avoid so how do we do that instead of having just heartbeats we can have multiple multi dimensional um assessment right we can have more stuff we can have let's say 
uh let's say i am building a query engine so maybe i can have that over the time i was processing x amount of queries so if if that rate has slowed down then i need to check why is that happening um or uh, heartbeat is there uh there is severe cpu spike in my application that is what i can detect stuff like that with scale of cloud systems it contributes to rising frequency of gray failures we can also leverage this scale to tackle the challenge of gray failure in particular since the gray failure is often due to isolated observations of observer leveraging the observations from a large number of different components so basically have this observer also spread out indeed many gray failure cases we investigated are only detectable in distributed fashion because each individual component has only partial view of the entire system even for the cases where underlying problem is simply observer is doing a poor job of detecting failures that distributed observation can also be helpful okay it is unreasonable for a system to track how it will be used for all applications that's correct so one feasible approach is to measure metric that approximate the observations of it app for example to tackle the network gray failure the cloud system can send probes to measure server to server latency and reachability to emulate observations of the network by common applications as in ping mesh such approximation can significantly reduce the chance of gray failure due to differential observability so basically it's the game of observability you the more you it's it's something which you know a lot of startups are coming and a lot of people are uh, actually taking the observability thing very seriously i think the paper what might take away from this paper is that we have to build and we have to invest in really quality observation um observability tools if we want our systems to be highly available why because a simple heartbeat is not sufficient the reason being failures specifically if you are going cloud scale can happen at multiple levels on your app there can be gray failures which are like random packet drops you know uh, some failures in io writes which are not which won't be detected by any device um, if you build a simple heartbeat type of a solution so you have to think of the on the observability of your apps very minutely and the more you think the better designs you will make and your systems will be more available i think that is what my take away um will be from this um from this paper that we should not wait how do we detect stuff before customer complains so next time when you design something next time when you sit in a design discussion or you become an architect and it's your responsibility to think about these things make sure that you don't forget that there will be gray failures and you and how do you de de define gray failure in this particular context differential observability so you understand and you define these things in your context and then you define multi dimensional ways to measure the availability of your system not just heartbeat and i think that is our take away and that is what this paper gives me all right everyone that's for this stream let's meet next time where we discuss something else or we code some stuff um uh, by that time enjoy your friday see you in the next one bye for now